Good morning everyone, hope you're doing well. It's Michelle here. Another video on Summer Wells. So before I start the video, I'm going to be talking about the search dogs. Just want to make a couple of clarifications about the video that I made yesterday night my time. A few people have rightly pointed out that my arrow to the basement door on the map needs to be further up and the square that I put the generator in also needs to be moved up a little bit and if you zoom right in you can see the generator I think on the Google image. Sorry about that guys I shouldn't edit things like this <laughs> when I'm tired because <laughs> it was quite late at night for me when I posted that video. I'll leave a link to this video in the description box of that video and I'll also pin it in the comments so that clarification will be clear. The second clarification some of you seem to think that I was, I don't know, berating Donald or calling him guilty. I'm not at all. And for anybody who's been watching my Summer World series, you'll know that my favoured explanation theory for this is abduction. So Donald could well be right. And that's why I want to talk about the search dogs this morning. Uh, the reason why... I'm negative towards Donald is because he's really not helping himself. He's been told to shut up, apparently, and and for good reason. Not necessarily saying he's incriminating himself in any way, but he could be channeling that anger in a more productive way. You know, people ask me in those comments, what would I do? Like, what, what would my answer be? And honestly... If my kid was missing, I'd be tearing down those, those woods with my bare hands. <laughs> um, even if it was fruitless, even if I really believe she wasn't in the woods, you know, you'd be doing kind of frantic, doing anything when you get desperate. I'd be out putting flyers everywhere. I'd be raising awareness. And I think that's a more healthy way to channel your frustration than sounding off on social media. But that's just my opinion, and I understand that Donald is under a huge amount of stress. I understand he's drinking. I'm concerned about his mental health. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie, I am concerned about his mental health, and I hope he and Candice are getting mental health support. So there's gonna be people who come into the comments now saying that I'm uh, I'm supporting baby killers or something. I've had that, I've had that on a <laughs> on recent videos. I'm impartial. I have no horse in this race at all. I'm completely impartial. I don't know the family. I haven't spoken to the family. I'm just looking at the information we've got currently and trying to kind of logically go through it. That's what I've done in my abduction theory video, my accident theory videos. That's what I tried to do based on the information that we've got and and that's not a whole lot honestly because this is an active investigation so the law enforcement are not going to release kind of their investigation they're not of course they're not and nor should they but because i'm impartial i'll i'll say things as i see it and donald could well be right now what i'd like to see is some clarification, and I know I'm not going to get this, but some clarification from somebody other than Donald, so a member of the search team, to confirm that the bloodhound went to the generator area, followed the dog trail down to the road, which would be presumably Benhill Road, and... And then the trail stopped, which indicates that Summer might have gone down that way, which is why I want to talk about the search dogs. Donald may well be right. You know, the things that Donald's talking about, hopefully are being fully explored and the names that he's named are being fully explored by law enforcement. I really hope they are. And if Donald knows more, then rather than sounding off on social media 
work with law enforcement. So, yeah, I'm concerned about Donald. And, you know, if he, if he does anything stupid, if he harms himself, he's no use to anyone dead, is he? And any information he might have dies with him. And that includes um, the possibility he's lying and actually he's guilty. His information dies with him. So hopefully he's being looked after. This has been a very long intro <laughs> to the search dogs. Now, if you've watched my Chris Watts videos on the search dogs that did the search in uh, Chris Watts' house and in the local environment, you'll pretty much know what I'm going to say about search dogs. I've got a few videos in my Chris Watts playlist about search dogs. So you've got search and rescue dogs and then you've got cadaver dogs. So don't confuse the two. Right, cadaver dogs generally are trained to scent cadaverine. It's a substance that's produced by the breakdown of certain proteins after death. Now there's a small amount of cadaverine produced in the living body because pro protein does break down but it gets stronger and stronger after death as the body decomposes. Not a pleasant thought, but that's what it is. There's, there's some dogs that scent blood, blood fragments, blood spots that the naked eye would definitely not be able to see. But cadaver dogs, as the name might suggest, generally are sniffing out cadaverine. And cadaver dogs are amazing, right? They can sniff out the scent of death like many feet underground. The body can have been removed quite a while ago. They can sniff out cremains, so the remains of a cremation, you know, like the ashes. And they are very, very good at what they do because they're trained to scent human cadaverine so if there's dead animals yeah that can potentially be confusing to a dog um, I think certain species of animals more so than others but generally speaking they are very very good but what cadaver dogs are not doing is searching for the cadaverine from a specific human being right they're, they're sniffing out the scent of death death from anybody right so if a, a cadaver dog alerts the chances are there is human remains somewhere in that vicinity or has been the body has had to be dead probably for a few hours i mean it depends on the environment it depends on the state of the body the body has got to have been dead a while put it that way i haven't heard anything about whether cadaver dogs in the summer well search, presumably they did have cadaver dogs, found anything or alerted to anything on the property, in the house, in the vehicle. If Candace put Summer's body into a vehicle and drove away with it and drove for like 30 minutes or an hour with Summer's dead body there, there is a chance of an alert, and maybe it's too soon. Maybe it's too soon. But I, I'd like to know what the cadaver dogs did, but I suspect, even if someone did die on the property, they wouldn't have alerted that, that soon. So presumably, if her body was removed very soon after death. That is loud. Can you see them? I don't know whether... My camera will pick that up. They are very loud. But if Summer's body had been hidden somewhere around the property, like, and the dogs went on like two, three days after, of course they would have alerted. The bloodhound that Donald was talking about is a search and rescue dog. And he would, or she, would have been searching for Summer's scent specifically. So what search and rescue dogs do is they're given something from the person that's missing. Could be shoe, sock, piece of clothing that other people haven't touched. We see this in the 
Watts body cam videos. The police asking Chris Watts, well, which which um, items have you not touched? You know, which items have only Shanann and the girls touched? So that's what you're doing. You're getting a, a scent that has got the strong scent, um, but which isn't clouded by anyone else's scent, right? So presumably they did that. In this instance, it was a bloodhound, but it could be other breeds. In the Watts case, we had a, a Labrador, a German Shepherd, who I think was the cadaver dog. But the search and rescue dog was a Labrador. So there's various breeds of dogs, right, who do this work. Even the old Spaniel. Spaniels are very, very good centres. In the UK, um, law enforcement use a lot of Springer Spaniels because of their brilliant scenting abilities. They do a lot of drug detection work. But bloodhounds have got a fantastic sense of smell. Like they're among, they're like the breeze of dog. All dogs have got a fantastic sense of smell. You know, it's thousands of millions times better than the human sense of smell. Like, when my dogs are kind of running around, especially Cassie, like, she follows scents. Like, you wouldn't believe. And what they do is they put their nose up in the air and they, they smell for that scent. And then they follow a trail where that scent is the strongest. Some people have said, well, summer scent is going to be all over that property. Of course it is. But a recent trail is going to be the one that is preferred by the dog. So it's the strongest scent. So again, in the Watts case, what Jane, the search dog handler, said was that Cody would pick up possible... Cody's the dog, by the way would pick up possible um, sites of trauma. Now, they're not trained specifically for trauma, but these search and rescue dogs are looking for areas of strong scent. So when somebody's stressed or excited, you know, the adrenaline's pumping, they're producing a stronger scent in their sweat than somebody who is just walking around at rest. So that could indicate a site of trauma or the dog could get confused that that person hasn't been in that spot at all. But it's to do with air currents. So the scent is on the air and then depending on the air currents, scents kind of congregate in, in particular places. Now, indoors, dogs can more easily get confused because, like again, in the Watts case, we saw Cody alert in the basement. Now, that could mean it's a site of trauma, as I've speculated, or it could just be something to do with the air currents in the home because they didn't turn off the air conditioning. So it could have been something to do with that that somehow the scent, the strongest scent was finding its way down to the basement. Probably, and correct me if anybody who is a, a, a search detection person, I think the more reliable outdoors, don't quote me on that though. Now, something else I've seen people talk about is, could rain have washed summer scent away? Well, eventually the scents dissip dissipate, they disappear, they get weaker and weaker. So a dog probably wouldn't alert to a very, very weak scent. A day or two of rain wouldn't, wouldn't get rid of all the scent, it wouldn't. I mean, in some ways it might consolidate it down to the ground. I'm guessing, again, don't quote me, I'm guessing. Um, but these dogs are amazing, they are very, very, very good. So if what Donald is saying is correct and the bloodhound did alert there, then it definitely adds weight to the abduction theory because it's close to the area where the school bus is. So somebody could have been hiding out behind the bus and would never have been seen. They could have been hiding out there. I mean, I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily mean camping there, <coughs> Because if they're there all the time, you know, like 
<laughs> just all the time. They're going to have to have had some shelter or something. So they probably would have been spotted eventually. But they just need to spend a few hours. And these abductors will stalk their victims. They'll play the long game. And as I mentioned in my abduction theory video the other day, they use social media. So if somebody in that area looking for victims, they could well search social media. They could well have even known someone's whereabouts on that very day and could have gone there and, uh, you know, set up camp and just waited, waited for an opportunity. How, you know, how many other times might they have done that and not had an opportunity, so just gone home? We just don't know. So it's very, very, very possible. But it's also possible Don's lying, <laughs> trying to, you know, use that to say, well, law enforcement didn't do the job and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I get that. It could be lying. That's why I'd like to see clarification from someone else. But yeah, it's definitely how it could have happened. It definitely explains the scenario. You know, somebody parks the vehicle on Ben Hill Road and some people have said it's not a dead end. I mean, I guess if you park near the entrance of Ben Hill Road, even if you got spotted and you needed to make a quick getaway, you could dis just disappear into the woods. So it could be the vehicle was parked on Ben Hill Road. could be that the vehicle was parked on Beach Creek somewhere, kind of off the road. It doesn't really matter where it was parked, guys, right? <laughs> The point is, if this is true, that is a real possibility. But the bloodhound has, has found that scent because that's exactly where Summer went. So let me know what you think in the comments below. As Chris McDonough says, do keep it classy. Now, my comment is do keep it classy, but, you know, tensions are running high. I understand that on both sides. You know, it's becoming very divisive. You know, you've got the pro-wells and the anti-wells <laughs> camps now. So please keep it classy. You can express your opinion, and that's absolutely fine. If you disagree with me, tell me. That's absolutely fine. But just, just keep it polite, right? That's all I ask. That is all I ask. It's only abusive comments that get deleted. Everything else stands, as long as it's classy. And, uh, and please do remember Michael Vaughan, the little five-year-old boy from Idaho. And I'll leave a link to his press conference um, that the chief of police did yesterday. I'll leave a link to that in the description box of this video. But it's also posted in my community tab. Okay, that's it. Guys, hope you're well. See you soon.